Thank you. After seeing the film and your response, I think we share the same opinion. Charles Ferguson needs no introduction here. We're going to have a, a, a short conversation and then open it to your questions and comments on the film. Uh, it is, I think, a brilliant and evocative film, deeply disturbing and optimistic all at the same time. Uh, it comes at an unusual moment. We're watching it between the Pope's encyclical and the December Climate Change Conference. What prompted you to make the film? Uh, what prompted me to make the film is that man sitting in the second row right here. Um, uh, uh, Tom Dinwiddie got in touch with me uh, because of my earlier films, and I, you know, I, I care about environmental things. I like nature. I like animals. I like hiking. But you know, I, I had not been following these things carefully, and to the extent that I had been doing so casually, I shared the predominant, I think, view, uh, which is that this is a very serious problem and there's nothing we can do about it and we should all just kind of slit our throats and wait to the end of the world. And, um, and Tom approached me and said, you know, it's not quite like that, and would you be interested in making a film both about the problem and about how to solve it? And, that led to a very long series of conversations. Uh, I didn't know anything about the subject. He didn't know much about movies. We educated each other, had a few fights. Uh, but um, uh, Tom deserves the credit for causing the creation of this film. Uh, Tom, you should stand up for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, for me, one of the things that came out of the film was not simply the urgency of climate change, but also the enormous human and natural destruction of fossil fuels and industrial agriculture, which you portray in such a compelling way. In what ways do you think you were changed in the process of making the film? Uh, Quite a lot, actually. I mean, uh, in in a number of ways, ranging from you know various aspects of my personal conduct. Um, it, but I really had no idea how vast this was, and I had no idea how deep the connections were between the the forces that are causing the climate problem and forces causing many other problems around the world of a much more immediate and direct kind, ranging from economic inequality to the destruction of nature to the incredible human toll associated with uh, fossil fuel extraction, which I had not understood. You know, I, I knew that coal mining was not a nice industry and that it was rough on coal miners, but I really had no idea. Uh, and you know, when I learned that uh, coal mining had killed at least a million people in China and probably two million worldwide over the last 30 years, uh, you know, that definitely was a wake-up call. Let me open yeah. it to your questions and comments. I'd ask you to keep them brief. Yes. Uh, Charles, you're, uh, you frequently have a clear point of view, <laughs> in my experience, but in your movies you hold that back a bit. Yeah. Uh, the question is, how do you, how do you, yeah, great movie, thank you. Uh, but how do you refrain from kind of beating people over the head again and again with the message? My experience of your movies is you haven't done that. Well, some people think that I have. <laughs> I, I don't think I made too many friends in the investment banking industry with my last film. But, um, although I did make some, interestingly. Um, uh, I guess I just, I try to be aware of the risk of inflicting one's opinions too directly on an audience. And it, you know, it's a very easy thing to do, but it's also kind of the cheap way out. And so I consciously try to refrain from it at the same time as part of me wants to scream at the world, you know, pay attention to this. Um, 
But if you're a good filmmaker, and regardless, somewhat interestingly, regardless of the quality of the films, I think that I've gotten to be a better filmmaker with each film. And the better you are as a filmmaker, the less you have to say. And so, you know, I spent a lot of time and energy with this film uh, trying to show that a picture really is worth a thousand words. And, and it, that was, by the way, not just true of the film and what's in the film, it was also true of, you know, me. I, people had told me about deforestation in Indonesia and palm oil in Indonesia. Nothing prepares you for seeing it. Nothing. Those images that you saw in the film, we have hours of that. It's, the, the nation of Indonesia will be gone in 15 years unless we do something about this. And, you know, I thought that showing that was better than, you know, yelling at people. So I try to bear that in mind. Yes. It's, it's a wonderful film. But my question is, how do you take this film and affect what's going to happen in Paris? It, 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 you know, this, you're preaching to the choir here. Uh, but the choir isn't what needs to change between now and the decisions in Paris. So I'm wondering, do you have small showings for uh, Policymakers, to negotiators, uh, do you have to pare it down? Do you, or do you are you trying to? You're going to have a Chinese version to try to affect their poli. What's what's the strategy? Well, uh, all of the above. It it uh, took me longer to make this film than I would have liked. Uh, the original plan was to be done, you know, probably like three months, four months earlier than it was. This was a very difficult film to make. Uh, I was not prepared for how difficult and complicated the issue would be, how difficult and complicated the filming would be. Uh, all of our filming in uh, Nigeria, Indonesia, and China was covert and illegal. Uh, and in a very real sense, people go to prison for filming what we were filming. Um, and, and editing it was very difficult and hard. So anyway, that's a long way of saying that. Uh, in an ideal world, we would be in theaters now. We're not, but we will be in theaters, we think, we hope, uh, soon. And uh, Tom and many people around Tom uh, are working on mobilization plans, which will be synchronized with the release of the film. Uh, and I think Jeff Horowitz is in the room here. Is Jeff here? Jeff, are you here? I saw Jeff earlier. Maybe he skipped out. Uh, he's already seen the film like 30 times. So um, anyway, th there are, there's a group of people who are prominent in the environmental world who are working on how to get this out in many ways. Uh, with regard to China, we'll see. I'm not optimistic about official distribution. When I started making the film, I was optimistic about official distribution. But with every passing day, we see that Mr. Xi is getting to be a nastier guy. And uh, specifically with regard to political opposition of any kind, criticism of any kind, and the media, very specifically with regard to those. And so I'm no longer optimistic about official distribution in China. But the good thing about piracy in China is that <laughs> there will be no problem with a large number of people seeing the film if, uh, if they desire to. Uh, in fact, friends of mine have sent me back uh, Chinese copies of my earlier films, which were available on the street in Beijing before my film was in theaters. <laughs> so, uh, but focusing yeah, at negotiators? Yeah, oh yes. The, there, uh, there will be, we are working on a series of screenings for high-level policy people, including at Paris, but also in nations, uh, including the United States, that will be important to Paris. Yeah. Yes. In, in regards to climate change, do you have a microphone for you? Just wait one second. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I've been a lifelong uh, environmentalist. But in regards to climate change, uh, Almost every environmentalist that I know 
It's calling for system change, if the system is the problem. Uh, also, if you could comment on, on that, and also maybe the dangers of fracking. Uh, well, so first on fracking, um, fracking is deliberately not in the film. There are a number of important subjects that are deliberately not in the film. Um, uh, I've come to know a fair amount about fracking. Uh, I don't particularly like it. I think that, you know, uh, I, I don't know if my own personal view is that it should be completely banned under all circumstances, but certainly uh, it should be far more intensely regulated and restricted than it currently is, at least in the United States. It's not in the film because I think that it's, uh, in terms of the climate issue and solving the climate issue, it's a distraction. And, uh, it, and I think that for a number of reasons that I can go into. Uh, it's specificity to the United States. It's not a major issue in much of the rest of the world. Uh, China doesn't uh, engage in any fracking at the moment. In, in, frac in, in China and India, fracking is not the problem. Coal is the problem. Coal and cars are the problem. Uh, so for various reasons, there are a number of potentially large issues that are not in the film. In some cases, I'm very comfortable with that. In the case of fracking, I am comfortable with it. There are a couple of other cases where I'm not comfortable with it, but you can't put everything in. Uh, I would have liked to put something in about Saudi Arabia, something in about Russia. Um, those are, you know, it may be also Canada, by the way, uh, the tar sands. There's, you know, they're mentioned very briefly. Now, with regard to your question about the system, well, you know, the, the system, uh, with regard to this issue, you almost don't know what that means. So uh, there's a system, sort of, in the United States, but it's not the same system that is in China or in Russia or in Brazil or in Nigeria or, you know. So uh, um, the political and economic circumstances and systems of the nations that have to, and the industries that have to react with regard to this issue are complicated and different, and, you know, we all have our own views about you know what's wrong with say the United States and how drastic one has to be in order to fix what's wrong with the United States and so on but but um, that you know that's another movie in the first place and in the second place um, there's a lot that you can say about this issue maybe not enough you know I don't know but there's a lot that you can say about this issue and how to address it which is surprisingly independent of the particulars of the political systems of individual countries. Um, in some ways that reflect well on the United States and in some ways that don't. You know, corruption's a problem here too. It's not just a problem in Nigeria. All, all the way in the back, yes, yes. Uh, if, you, if you could just wait for one second, we'll have the mic there. Uh, thanks for making such a very enlightening film. Um, I guess what I want to say is that, I mean, just kind of off the other gentleman's um, question over here, it seems like irregardless of the system, the one thing that all, er, all of our, these countries have, all of us have in common is that nobody, none of, none of us are paying the true cost of carbon emissions. And that um, I guess I'm a little surprised that there was no mention about that, that it, it the film, it seems very compelling that we need to do something and do something fast, and we need to do something very big very fast. But that the, um, the economic incentives that were discussed in the film are going to be rolling out over a pretty long period of time, and that we don't have a lot of time, and that um, I guess uh, I would have liked to have seen more about um, taxing emissions or putting a price on emissions because most economists, whether they're liberal or conservative, agree that would be the big driver that would really force us to, as a, as a whole society, everybody in the society, to make changes in all the areas that you've discussed in the movie. Um, so we, we're, we're in violent agreement. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so we actually, I actually recorded, uh, filmed 
uh, multiple very long, very detailed interviews with economists, leading economists about these questions. Um, Lord Stern, for example, if you know who Nick Stern is. Uh, we have a two and a half hour interview with Nick Stern. It's not in the movie. Um, it, uh, maybe, you know, I, I, you might be right that I should have spent film should have spent an incremental 30 seconds on just saying taxing carbon is an efficient way to you know, get at all of this. I didn't feel, though, that, and I still don't feel, that, that it was the most effective way to convey you know, what we need to do and what the costs are of not doing it. There are many specific policy instruments of which taxing carbon is one. Um, international treaties are another. Uh, various regulatory schemes are a third. Various possible subsidies to renewable energy and other activities. Um, and then there's the whole industrial agriculture question, um, part of which you can get at by taxing carbon, but much of which you cannot. It, you have to address it you know, in other ways. Um, Potentially taxing meat, you know, maybe. But it, so, I I felt that it wasn't a primary subject of the film. But I take your point, and if I was doing it again, there might be an extra thirty seconds about taxing carbon. <laughs> I, I have the microphone. Yes. Um, somebody, we handed the microphone. So, I'm sorry. Anyways, um, I understand that like you had to cut down a lot of stuff because it, you're making a film that people are, need to want to watch. But um, my general question is, what is your opinion on the actions of a lot of the South Asian and Southeast Asian democracies, such as India, which is going to become one of the biggest polluters, and, uh, uh, and you mentioned in the film Indonesia, like what they're doing towards fighting climate change? Because you had that, um, the Indian energy advisor saying like our goal is to burn more coal so and then and also follow up to that is like is there anything that we as the very smug liberals of Berkeley can do <laughs> to uh, to fix to, to help um, the populations of South Asia and Asia address climate change well um not everybody is in a position to affect every question uh, in every issue in every nation. With regard to um, what Asian nations are doing and what their views are, I Asia is, for the most part, uh, well, you know, Asia is not one place, as you know. It's a lot of different places. But, it, but it, simplistically speaking, Asia is a huge problem. And uh, China is moving in the correct direction, but not nearly as fast as it should and not in all ways that it should. Um, uh, and it also, by the way, with regard to, uh, to go back briefly to the question of taxing carbon, there, there, it, it, taxing carbon uh, gives a lot of people in a lot of circumstances the right incentives, but there are kinds of people who, and important people in important positions who aren't affected by it at least not in a direct way. And I mention that because uh, city planning is, you know, one urban planning is one huge issue with regard to this. And the people who make those decisions are not directly affected by those kinds of incentives. They're affected by their national leader saying, you know, we're not going to make cities this way anymore. We're going to do something different. Or, you know, however their national political systems work. And so uh, in Asia, there, there are three gigantic problems. One is the very rapid rate of urbanization and income, um, increased per capita income in those nations. The second is uh, they're being obliterated by Chinese and increasingly also South Korean, Malaysian, and Indonesian corporations at a very high rate. Uh, the deforestation palm oil dynamic is Indonesia is the biggest and most important place where it's occurring, but it's also occurring in Malaysia, it's also occurring in Cambodia, it's also occurring, you know, throughout Southeast Asia. And uh, and then 
the, the third is the legacy of coal. And uh, Asia is it's a tough place to deal with with regard to these questions. We have you know, a little bit of time, but we don't have very much. And uh, yeah, tough, important. Unfortunately, we're just beginning the discussion, uh, but I have a brief comment and then a final question for Charles, and we look forward to continuing the discussion with Charles and more generally at the Center for Latin American Studies on campus and through various electronic means. Uh, I just wanted to mention the film is, as we've seen, so powerful, so moving, and so, so razor sharp in its focus. Uh, but the intensity of making the film, from, as you point out, filming illegally in China and Indonesia, from Appalachia to Kenya, from the Amazon uh, to all the other places you were, I think is a real tribute to your determination, uh, your wisdom, in initiating the film, uh, and uh, I think it is a real achievement. What I would like to end with is a very simple question. What thought would you like to leave us with after the conversation and the film? Uh, well, that, that this is an urgent but solvable problem, and it's one where uh, we're getting very close to the point if we're not already at it. It, you know, it depends on all kinds of things. But, but for a very high fraction of us, uh, we're getting to the point where uh, individual personal action uh, can have very large scale and very important consequences. So, you know, getting solar on your house, buying a hybrid car, you know, all of those kinds of eating less meat, uh, all of those kinds of personal choices. Th this is a situation where there are many regards in which large scale, high level political action and policy action is important, vital, necessary. But uh, we can have collectively a very big effect through our individual choices. And I, you know, I, I think that that's going to come. The question is, I, I think that you know, a quarter century from now, we're going to regard uh, the the kinds of cars that we drive and the way that we eat. In it's there's going to be a major cultural transition, very similar to the way we now think of smoking, for example, um, uh, or gay rights, or you know any number of other issues where there's been a major kind of cultural sea change. I think that's going to happen. The question is whether it's going to happen in time, because you know uh, we're in a rush with nature, and nature's not going to change its laws. But so th that's what I would say. When do we see the film again? Uh, when the gods of theatrical uh, film distribution speak, which <laughs> they have not yet done but they will soon. Uh, they, and there will also be a number of other private screenings. We're arranging for one at Stanford and, I mean, well, private, you know, this isn't private, but, you know, screenings, limit non-commercial non screenings. Are you taking requests for screenings? Sure, yeah. Speaking from personal experience, it's better the second time and even better the third. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Harley.